Hey, hey, hey. It's going to be another game of Jiraki Cup 12. Woohoo! Going to be between Void Warrior and March Walden. I don't know why I'm talking like this. Uh, excited to see this one because this is quite an important series right here. March Walden has the higher, uh, the lower seed coming into this. Lower is better, right? And so... <laughs> sound like Krusty the Clown. <laughs> uh... Hold up now. So, um, if Marchwaden wins this series right here, 2-0, then he's going to be tied for second place in the group with Arek, and that would mean that he will advance to the upper bracket. So, this is an important series for Marchwaden. And so, naturally, he's going off faction. That's pretty cool to see. Uh, we'll see how that develops, but Void Warrior is going to be playing his typical Con F right here. And uh, let's go ahead and check the info.txt. If I can get that open, of course, that would be nice. There we go. So March Wadden picks first here, it looks like, and Void is going to grab Con F. And March Wadden picks the uh, the map as well. Looks like they'll go same factions for the next game as well. March may have met his match here. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Tough guy here. I like how he's sitting on top of the uh, salvagers there. It just it looks kind of funny. He's like a like a like a chicken spreading its wings over the chicks or whatever that scripture says. Anyhow, <laughs> LEV Fab on the way for March 1, but it is SC first, so that is the correct order there. That he gets the Spark Cruiser before the LEVs. And this is that f uh... Wait, this is 6? Oh, okay, because there's a Salvager hiding inside here. I thought I was gonna say, you know, he's got the two RU Salvagers there, which is really nice to see. Um, but at this point, probably wants to drop one of these and pull off the line, uh, off to that second base and start mining over there. Meanwhile, for Void Warrior, see he does have Skim Fab on the way, and it looks like he's moving out with the PC this time. This is kind of what I was saying he ought to do in the last game, uh, is, you know, go for an attack if he is going to get this early game tech, so it looks like that's what he's doing. Just have to keep our eye on it though, he does have a blast drone building, <laughs> very nice, very nice. Could be fast AV to BC. Yeah, you mean like if he wants to hold that many RUs. It's possible, he does have AV tech on the way here. Typically, this will result in a float of RUs, so unless you're going heavy into tech, it's generally a mistake, so... But that's true, we'll have to keep our eye on that. This is based on a retire, by the way, so... Not much defense here for March 1. Getting all, uh... All 10 salvagers there, so that's pretty greedy, actually. So, if there's a window where Void Warrior can exploit this, that's gonna be... That's gonna be it. I mean, this is definitely the... This is definitely the game where it would happen. So, let's keep our eyes on that, see what happens. Also, a little touch, I kind of like to move the support cruiser to the second base on this map because then when the carrier gets the next SC, it can move out this way. And I typically do expand to this one, but I like to have the carrier in the middle here, so. Second BC for Void Warrior here. March 1 does have the tech already, so you're going to have to watch out for that. There are AVs coming out here. LAV going to see what's up now. Archwad, I'm gonna drop a smoke on the logistics module, I like that. This is actually a very aggressive logistics module, so it might be a little bit difficult to keep this one up, but uh, we'll see if he's able to do that. But I think that um, Void Warrior is gonna need to get a tech here, and I actually like doing it before you get any more skims. See, he's only got five on the main, it would be nice to get one of these guys mining Aryus here and then jump into some tech. Um, and you can do that, you know, before you before you keep building skims because they're not going to help too much against the. Uh... Oh, I see. He's spinning our use on armor. That's usually a bad idea, but I'll talk about that in a second. First, though, he does get a hit on the AV here, which does pretty good damage. But if he's going to go in and finish the kill with skims, he's going to lose a lot. So that's not probably the best thing to do. Yeah, and it looks like uh, looks like March is just going to get away with this then. Because th this window to punish the punish the greed here is really closing fast. So yeah, Void Warrior getting ref mode, I think that's a good call. He's got to back off of this, but he needs to get some kind of tech to answer the AAVs as well. So, And you can tech them both at the same time, but he's got to be aware of this. This is going to be problems if he doesn't uh, lock in. Like, maybe just the soul chips even will be okay. Railguns would be ideal, but... <laughs> BD is tech, right? Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so really, he's fine. Now, I will say, maybe he can do something funny with smoke on the base runner, but, uh... Uh-oh. Yeah, not if the BD is getting caught here. Notice the suppression as well is slowing it down, so... 
<laughs> Void Bray. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Savon Air. Er, Savon. Protoss Air, there it is. What do they, do they call it Air Toss? I can't remember. I haven't played StarCraft 2 in so long. Discard though. Know. <laughs> uh-huh. It's just a good unit, you know? Consistent damage. It's air, too. Very tasty. Did they? <laughs> I remember when Void, uh, Void Rays were getting, uh, like, Omega nerfed because everyone was super mad at them. Again, no smoke, by the way. Schemes really need to evacuate over here. The big question, I think, is what's happening on this side. I hear something exploding over there, though. Oh, this PC is in duress, actually. Sometimes in this situation, you can hide in the corner. Like, AVs don't have a very big vision range, but he's gonna get caught here. That PC will probably fall. Oh, dear. This is starting to look, uh, dicey. <laughs> Yeah, it goes from, you know, having a pretty good window to attack to, like, just straight up dead, basically, I think. Because really, I think this PC has to die. I don't see how... I don't see how Void Warrior can get this one out here. It's not like these AVs are gonna stop. And this is a lot of Salvagers dying. March 1 actually, I think, even being a little bit too safe here. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Whoa! I sneezed. Anyway, he just, <laughs> he just he needed to to use the attack earlier, but he does have the railgun fev now, so yeah. This PC just goes down so quick here. I mean, Marchwan's not gonna back off when he sees that he can get this. Losing PCs in the early game that's really rough as as kind of kills you. So oh, the AOE is big. Ah! Oh, he's hurting. <laughs> oh dear. This uh, assault railgun is actually in range to get hit too. Oh, the skins just get shredded. Oh, jeez. Yeah, and that that second PC will go down too. And at this point, yeah, Void Warrior agrees. <laughs> I was about to I was about to say it, but there it is. You know, I real I really like the AOE on AVs. I really like it because it's kind of sad when uh, when the AVs just can't kill skins very well. Alright, let's jump into game two if it works. I heard, uh, I heard someone saying this replay was bugged, but, no, it seems to be going fine. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree. Just a little bit earlier with the rails, but, um, really he needed to get some kind of tech during the attack. Okay, last game I gave him one advice, which is that he needed to get, uh, like, be aggressive or get ref mode. He took the advice. That is great. That is excellent. My advice this time is get a tech early when you're attacking. Uh, I would hold off on the Sand Skimmer upgrades until after you have two PC at the earliest, but really you probably need a tech before that as well, so. But you know, DOK is a tough game. So I think that Void Warrior is doing quite a lot of good learning here. Definitely, you can see adaptation throughout like every game that he plays, so. Keep your eye on him. Don't count him out just yet. Factions stay the same here. This time it's Void Warrior's pick. He's gonna grab College Teeth. And we'll see what he does with it. Explodifies the uh, wreck over here. A game of pure wit and skill. <laughs> and a little bit of luck. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. There's no luck involved. Not at all! Well, I will say there's not much RNG in DOK, but I guess there is a little bit. Railgun accuracy and stuff like that. March 1 with another SC first game here. You just have all six on the main. And again, I really like to pull one of these guys off and uh, start mining CUs with it um, off the second base, but looks like he's going to stick it on the main. So... Again, might be a bit of a tech focus. Last game, we didn't see it come out, but he did actually, uh... He did actually get the, um... Whatchamacallit, he got the Strike Fighters last game. They didn't, they didn't ever have time to launch, but, uh... That's a lot of clicking over here. 
relatable. That's how I play with probes. <laughs> but yeah, so he did, um, he did actually use that, uh, RU bank that he had. That is true, that is true. I mean, the luck in DOK comes from the fog of war, right? Like, if you guess what your opponent is gonna do and you guess right... Phone call? Oh. When you guess what your opponent is doing and you guess right, that can actually be a bit of luck. Freaking phone call? Can you believe it? I didn't think phones still existed. Anyway, Void Warrior with some skims coming out here. Uh-oh, but he's falling back to his old vices. He doesn't have ref mode. Ah! That's too bad. AV Fab gonna come out from March Wadden. Again, the window to punish this goes down really, really fast. This is why I'm saying either attack or get eco, because if you try and do both, the window to attack just closes so quick here. And March Wadden gonna extract here. Oh, my car is an extended warranty? Oh! I better pick up that phone next time. <laughs> Skadoosh, there goes the first artifact from Arch One. Was wondering if maybe he'd drop a turret down, doesn't look like he's interested in that. Nice power slide though. Uh <laughs> And second PC coming out of Void Warrior before ref mode, but he does have Railgun fat. So maybe there's thoughts to like an extended Railgun push here, but one thing I'll say is if you end up getting Rift Mode in a game, you always want it before the second PC. Otherwise, uh, you're gonna be in some trouble in situations like this. Assault Rail's coming out though. That's a good unit. I like to see it. He definitely, you know, in that uh, game against Arek where he was um, getting attacked by BCs, he definitely needed heavy railguns. But assault railguns are a good unit. And I think sometimes heavy railguns can be a bit of a trap. So. Yeah, I agree. That's a really fun build to play. That's a very fun build. But uh, the thing is, when Railgun Rush is too strong, the game is just like... Two PC pushing to ref... Yeah, that's true, that's true. But it's kind of fallen out of the meta. I think it's it's best advice for, uh, for a new player to just go for ref mode before you get the 2 PC. Anyway, when Railgun Rush is like really set in the meta, it's like horrifying, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I don't think it's really good for Railgun Rush to be strong, but it's not good for it to be weak, and that's just like, that's a really difficult thing to balance out, you know what I mean? So, I nice start by the way. And just to catch that base, uh, Blast Drone right before it can connect there. And it's just a massacre on this side now. I think that, uh, I think that one BD will kill a turret, so that was actually pretty close there, but, um, Well, I mean, I've, I've been trying it every now and then. I, I try it a lot in practice games, even though I think I've played Savon and Savon or Coalition in all of my tournament games so far. But it's not usually worked for me. I'm pretty sure it's in a little bit of a weak spot. You know, you know who we need, though? Because, like, I always am a fan of Railgun Rush, but I'm honestly not super good at it. We need a uh, Sparrow to be playing. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is good. That is good. Because, yeah, I mean, it's it's a very diverse kind of... Uh... Oh, yeah, he is Arrigan. He does have Arrigan. Uh-oh. That's gonna fare badly for Void Warrior, I suspect. But he does have Rift Boat coming out. But there's a lot of variation in Rail Rush. I mean, there's a lot of different ways that it can play out. And which one you want to go for is really dependent on the situation. Not even just on the player's, uh, you know, style. And then, yeah, it takes a lot of skill. So, I mean, like, it's a good build. Um, but it's just really hard to balance because if it's ever strong, like, the, the best option, it'll just be the only thing anyone ever does. And it's just not really fun to see it over and over again. So it's a difficult thing to balance, but... Even if Railgun Rush is a little bit weak, I think it's generally still in a good place there. It's just an option, you know, definitely something you can fall to, but not something you'll see every game. So... When I first figured it out, I'm not sure what you mean, because I think Sparrow was always better at me earlier. There was a time where, you know, oh my gosh, oh my, oh no, not like this, ah! Oh no. Oh gosh, this is, this is bad. Oh gosh. <laughs> 
bad turret placement? I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna have to disagree. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's true though. It can't reach the cells there. But... Anyway. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Marshmallow gonna drop a turret here, by the way, before he extracts the artifact. I like the. I like the guts on you, kid. Oh no, but he's getting hit by the Sorrels. Yeah, he should just drop the turret here. This is great timing, because the Assault Railguns have to deal with these AVs. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It carries the next bit. Anyway, there was a time when Railgun Rush was really, really strong with EMP. That was it. But the cooldown on EMP was too low, we decided. And I think the cost went up, too. So That was, I think, when Railgun Rush was the strongest. But it's kind of what I was talking about. That was a meta where, like... It was just too strong. I mean, you had to railgun rush every game, and it was just so hard to hold against it. And, you know, I guess there was a time in vanilla when railgun rush was really strong because you could fall back on the two base, but that was kind of, that was kind of its own thing. Anyway, I guess that's the entire group stage cast, and it's only 11.30 p.m., so, or a.m., so let's keep going. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'll move on to the next one here. Thank you.